the depolarization phase. In the depolarization phase, once the stimulation reaches the threshold level, the stimulation reaches the threshold level, then sodium gates, initially the mechanical sodium gates will be opened, then the voltage gated sodium channels will be opened, then that leads to sudden rush of sudden rush of sodium ions into the cell that finally leads to depolarization and uh, when this depolarization phase when it is about to reach the equilibrium potential sodium equilibrium potential that is plus 35 uh, millivolts when it try to reach to that equilibrium level then the active gates of sodium will be closed so here, initially, this is the resting phase of this is during the resting phase of sodium channels. Then this is the active. This is initially this is the resting phase of sodium channels. Then this one is the active phase of sodium channels. The active gate and inactive gate both were opened. By this, there is easy entry of uh, easy influx of sodium ions into the cell, and that leads to increase in positivity of the cell. And another thing is, and exactly if this one happens, this one happens during the time of depolarization. So the active gate will be opened once the threshold reaches. Initially the mechanical gates, then voltage gates, both were open and there is sudden rush of sodium ions into the cell. Then, after this phase, when, when there is, uh, when the positivity reaches the equilibrium potential, when it reaches above plus 35 millivolts, there is sudden closure of there will be sudden closure of inactive gates of sodium. Inactive gates of sodium and the active gates remain open during this uh, phase when it reaches to plus 35 millivolts. So by this what happens? There is a lot of sodium ions will enter easily into the channel but it will be trapped, trapped due to Closure of closure of inactive gates. So, lot of sodium ions are available outside the cell membrane. The entry is also possible, but but the proper transport is not possible because the inactive gates were closed. So, by this, lot of sodium ions will be trapped inside the cell membrane. So, if you observe these channels very carefully, so during resting membrane potential. The active gates, this one is active gates and these are inactive gates. So active gates will be closed, then inactive gate will be open. So by this no entry of sodium ions. That what we have seen in resting membrane potential. That's why there is no elevation or depression here. It is, it is in resting gates. Second thing. When it reaches to depot, uh, threshold level, when the stimulus is given at the threshold level, then what happens? There is opening of initially mechanical gates, then voltage gated channels of sodium will be opened. So by this, the active gates of sodium and inactive gates will be kept open. So by this, there is free entry of sodium ions. The cell, then the positivity inside the cell will be increased. So the result of the graph as we have seen here, so it, this shows positivity. Positivity. So up to which level the positivity? Up to the equilibrium level. The sodium, uh, the equilibrium uh, level of sodium is plus 35 millivolts. Equilibrium potential of Sodium is plus 35 millivolts. When it reaches to, to plus 35 millivolts, 
the inactive gates this time the inactive gates will be closed and and the active gates will remain but by this what happens so abundant sodium is available but but what happens there is trapping of sodium inside inside the channels so this we call it as sodium trapping so apart from this apart from this closure of inactive gates of sodium another important thing will be takes place during this phase so so the next phase what we are discussing is the phase of repolarization repolarization so in the phase of repolarization as we see from positive charge positivity there is a sudden sudden loss of positive ions and again the cell is going towards negative it is going towards negative the reason of the negativity again coming back to this normal resting phase the reason of this negativity is mainly leaky channels of potassium ions so there is continuous there is continuous leakage of there is continuous leakage of potassium ions so when the when there is continuous leakage of uh, potassium ions and no sodium is coming in then there is loss of positive ions inside the cell and this shows negativity negativity so it reaches up to up to the level of resting membrane potential when it reaches to resting membrane potential still more and more potassium ions will be leaked more during when it reaches to the resting membrane potential so it further undergoes negativity further undergoes negativity because excess leakage of so this part excess this part is due to excess leakage of leakage of potassium this is what leakage of potassium ions and this is excess leakage of potassium that means what the, uh, the leaky channels are still kept open that leads to excess leakage of potassium ions and again and again due to the closure of closure of voltage gated voltage gated uh, potassium channels and and continuous opening of this uh, leaky potassium channels again this negativity excess negativity will again comes to the resting membrane potential so this phase the second phase we discussed is as the polarization phase the polarization phase and this phase the excess and this one excess uh, leakage due to excess leakage of potassium ions and uh, more negativity we have seen here this we call it as after repolarization this is called after after repolarization after repolarization and this phase we call it as after depolarization after depolarization so one thing we have to observe very carefully that before giving sufficient stimulus so initially what we have given very light stimulus we have given so this gives a small uh, increase in amplitude and this amplitude will be dies off instantly again one more stimulus is given which is greater than the initial one again uh, some uh, amplitude we got and again it is dies off unless we are giving proper threshold stimulus so whatever the stimulus you give so sub threshold level sub threshold level so those those 
uh, amplitude will not reaches to the threshold level. So those will give some positivity and it dies off. So these we call it as graded potential. Graded potential. This one we call it as graded potential. Now the important concept we need to understand is what are graded potential and what are action potential. So graded potentials, so here this side it is graded and action potential. As we see graded potentials are, these are graded and action potential it is not graded. So graded potential always, always it is propagated. Sorry, uh, graded potentials never propagate. It initially gives some positivity and it will die off. So it will never propagate. But whereas the action potentials, these will propagate. That means it shows some action. Action potential, it shows some action. It transfers from one nerve fiber, one end of the nerve fiber to another end of nerve fiber. For say example, if someone touch my finger, this sensation, this sensation, what are the sensation? It may be hot, cold, what are the sensation? If anyone give stimulus to my peripheral area, the sensation will travel, will propagate to spinal cord. So here, one thing we can write in gradient potential, it is non-propagate. Because it, 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 there itself it dies off. And this one is propagate. Propagate. So one is non propagate, this one is propagate. Next. Graded potentials are local potentials. These are not local potentials. Potentials. So the phenomenon of summation is phenomenon of summation is possible. Means the initial stimulus will add on to the next stimulus. That is possible. That means this is the initial stimulus. If you give immediately the next stimulus, the next stimulus will be add on. This we call it as summation. So summation, the phenomenon of summation is possible in graded differentials and summation is not possible in the phenomenon of summation is not possible in action potential. So these are the main differences between graded potentials and uh, local potentials. Then so once we understood about the action potential, so once you clear very clear about the concept of uh, action potentials, then we must understand very important uh, concept that is refractory period. So what is refractory period? Refractory, the meaning itself it says refractory means stubborn unacceptable, unadjustable. So this is a refractory. So what is refractory and how it is applicable in action potentials? So observe very carefully. So this is the action potential what we have discussed earlier and based on this trying to understand the concept of the concept of refractory period. From this phase, that is from the contraction, maximum contraction phase to this phase, the phase of initial part of after depolarization. So this phase we call it as this total phase 
we call it as absolute refractory period. So this one is absolute refractory period. Then so from this phase, that is starting off after repolarization, then the cell undergoes more negativity and it again comes back to the normal resting phase, resting membrane potential. So this phase, this total phase, I have differentiated in different colors. You can appreciate that. So this phase we call it as relative, relative refractory, relative refractory. Absolute refractory period and relative refractory period. If you observe the mechanism of this action potential, what we have discussed, I will draw again. Say, for example, this is the cell. During the polarization, during the phase of depolarization, when the cell attains positivity, during the phase of positivity. What happens initially in resting membrane potential, the sodium channels are, the active gates will be closed initially and the inactive gates will be opened. So this is resting membrane potential. So there is no positive or negative uh, amplitudes we see. Then after this, in depolarization phase, in depolarization phase, what happens? The active gates will be opened and the inactive gates also open. So there will be sudden rushing of sodium ions. A sudden opening of sodium uh, opening of this sodium channels, active gates and inactive gates open, then there is sudden rushing of sodium ions into the cell that increases positivity in, inside the cell. That positivity we have shown in the diagram. Then, after this, when it reaches the equilibrium potential, that is plus 35 millivolts, then this time the inactive gates will be closed. You can differentiate between these three things. The inactive gates will be closed and the active gates will remain open. This means what? The sodium ions are abundant here in the extracellular fluid. Even though lot and lot of sodium ions are present and they are trying to enter inside the cell, but the due to closure of inactive gates, there is no entry of, further entry of sodium ions. And at the same time, at the same time, here sodium ion entry is not possible, right? So the sodium ions entry is closed, and at the same time there is and there is efflux of efflux of potassium ions. So what happens to the cell? So the cell loses negativity slowly. Because no further incoming of sodium ions and there is continuous, there is continuous leakage of potassium ions. So that this results in results in negativity of the cell. So this shows the negativity of the cell. During this phase, during this phase, what happens? If you observe only two things very carefully. So we are discussing about this one, this phase, this phase, right? So during this phase, the sodium ions, we need to observe two things very carefully. So the sodium ions, inactive gates remains closed, but the active gates are open. But 
there is no use even though we have a lot and lot of sodium ions are there they are entering freely inside but they are not allowing uh, the inactive gates are closed and they are not allowing inside so few sodium ions will come and trap inside will trap inside so during this phase during this phase whatever the stimulus you give whatever the stimulus you give so great of the greatest stimulus you give threshold level above threshold level whatever the great stimulus you give this won't give any kind of response this won't give any kind of response that is why we call it as absolute refractory this is called absolute refractory period so whatever the given 